So sometimes you come out with a product, right, and you think it is amazing, it's incredible, and then people start to use it, and then they start to tell you. And sometimes what they tell you isn't exactly easy to hear, especially when you literally have 30,000 units to sell. Perfect. There and there. You wanna, you wanna, you wanna smell? <laughs> I'm kidding, you can smell now because it's amazing, the new version. The old version, eh, it was good, it wasn't, it wasn't as good as it should have been. So, so here's the learning and lesson for today. Sometimes you create a product that you think is amazing, right? It's incredible, right? You get it, you love it, but then you put it out into the wild, right? And then people start using it. And then they start telling you whether or not it's reviews or emails about how they really feel about the product. And when we created this product, actually this is the version 2.0. The first version said actually like super fresh on the label. Um, I got sued over that one or almost sued because of that. That's a whole nother story for another time. And I honestly shouldn't have removed it, but I just didn't want to deal with it because when lawyers get involved, nobody wins other than lawyers. So backing up, I got it. I'm sorry that I'm dumping. I'm dumping today, gentlemen, brain dump. So created a, a deodorant. Um, I found this lab um, that makes some of the biggest companies in terms of deodorants product, right? They are like a huge lab. And the problem with using this company as opposed to some of these other like private label companies is that it had to be a custom formulation. They didn't do like private label. And so once again, the downside to doing anything custom is that typically your opening order volume is gonna be really big. And for us, it was 30,000 units um, of our deodorant which is a lot, right? That's a lot of deodorant. Now, the good news is that it takes a while to expire and I really felt from a business perspective that it was going to be a home run in terms of a product if the product was incredible. And so we went to this manufacturer and they started sending me all these different samples of these different like natural deodorants. And then I basically tested them to see what I liked, what I didn't like. And basically we like Frankenstein what I felt was the best natural deodorant. I took the best ingredients from all the different products, put it together, and it was an incredible natural deodorant. Now, the one thing, there are two things actually, you need to know about natural deodorants, all right? The thing that really prevents sweat is aluminum, right? Now, aluminum is what you find in antiperspirant deodorants, right? Or antiperspirants. Um, it's aluminum that goes in when you rub it under your pit, it basically like clogs your sweat ducts and prevents you from actually sweating. That's how it works. Now, the downside to aluminum is that it's super bad for your body, right? It also makes it so that all these like impurities that are in your body that normally come out and are released through sweat get trapped in your lymph system, all right? There's also a bunch of research that's come out to show that a lot of the deodorants that we're using and antiperspirants on a daily basis, the cheap ones, are effing up your endocrine system as a man, right? Endocrine system, it's all about hormone regulation, right? Testosterone. And so I was like, you know what? I am tired of basically using and rubbing toxic chemicals underneath my armpits. And so I try a bunch of natural deodorants and most of them kind of sucked, right? I've tried everything from that little like salt, like rock crystal to there's, there's a bunch of them on the market. And the problem with them is that they aren't really crazy effective in terms of odor elimination right? Also sweat, right? They don't do an incredible job in terms of antiperspirant because they don't have aluminum. But the upside is that they're healthier and better for your body. Something else you need to understand when you are somebody that is switching from an antiperspirant deodorant to a natural deodorant, two weeks approximately is how long it takes for your body to actually like regulate. A lot of people, when they start using a natural deodorant after they had been using an antiperspirant that was basically preventing you from sweating, all right, you sweat and you smell a little bit worse right? And you think right away, you're like, oh man, this stuff stinks. It sucks. It doesn't work. When the truth is that it's a lot of the impurities and the toxins that are being released from your body. Your body will actually regulate after about 14 days or two weeks to the new product, but it's got to basically purge all the toxins out of your system. Something that I was not aware of when I actually started selling the new version. And then I started doing some Google searching and research and I found out that that was actually what happens. And so long story short, it took like 40 or 50 different versions or variations, but I felt like we nailed an amazing formula. I felt like it was the best thing at the, on the market at the time. The smell was a eucalyptus spearmint. It was, it was, 
incredible, right? It was a clear solid, which meant that when you rub it on, right, it's not gonna jack up your clothing. It's not gonna make your like pits all like clumpy and white. And so we were really pumped and I loved the product. And so we started selling it, right? We ordered 30,000 units. All right, thinking, okay, it's gonna take us a little bit of time to work through these, but I feel like we can move them. So we send them out, we start getting reviews and it was apparent. There are a lot of people that thought that it didn't work well enough. It didn't provide enough long lasting protection from odor. And so the thing is, right, when you get, start getting these, these, these comments, it's like, well, are you like extra stinky? <laughs> like that's, because basically odor is, is a personal thing, right? Most people, you know, are average when it comes to like stinky like BO. Some people are like extra stinky when it comes to BO and some people really don't sweat or stink at all. All right, we were getting a ton of reviews. A lot of the reviews, the majority, the vast majority of the reviews that we were getting on the new deodorant were awesome, right? People were like, yo, this is incredible. It works incredible, it smells incredible, and all that good stuff. But the fact is that around 10% of the emails that we were getting and the only like negative reviews were from people that would try it and it didn't work well enough. It didn't last long enough in terms of protection. And so we knew right away pretty much that we had a potential issue. One or two comments about no, it doesn't work well enough or last long enough. It's like whatever, it's a fluke. But when you start getting more than a few, it's a sign that there's a problem with your product. And so what do you do, right? Do you just eat all the cost, <laughs> right? Because at the time, like I said, we ordered 30,000 units. And for the vast majority of people that were leaving reviews, they loved the product. And so we knew it was a great product. I knew that it was a great product, but the question was, can we make it better? And so what happened was when it was time to actually reorder the deodorant, we went back to the lab. Actually, it was long before we, we had to reorder it. We said, all right, so here's the deal. We need it to last longer. We need it to protect better. What can we do to basically double the intensity and the strength of the protection? And so once again, went back to the drawing board. Started twisting dials and tweaking and pressing levers. Ultimately, basically they sent me a version that I tried and right away I knew it was amazing. Beast, we've created a beast of a deodorant in terms of long lasting protection. The way I know now, right? I rub it on in the morning, after the shower, I go all day, I exercise, I shower at night, I wake up eight hours later in the morning, smell my pits, nada, nothing, no BO, never, right? And that's the thing, before I would smell like, I'm like, ooh, time, I gotta, I gotta freshen up a little bit. But now I am so incredibly excited to relaunch this. But the problem is that we had literally like 30,000 units that we had to move through. And so we did, we just kept selling them. We kept giving them away or combining them in terms of promotional items. Um, we were having a lot of deals in terms of, hey, buy this, buy this, buy this together. And we're really just trying to get this product through. Um, we're also trying to get it on as many pits as possible. Now, the truth is that there are some people that tried it once that will not try it again because it didn't live up to the hype or their expectation. And so they're done, right? They'll never use it again. They'll, they went back to their toxic deodorant. But I know, and I'm hopeful I should say, that some people will try the new version. But I am confident that people that try it now for the first time will absolutely love it. Um, and if you guys want to check it out, <laughs> I don't sell much here on this channel, but I am going to link down below to the new deodorant. I'm also going to give you guys a discount code if you want to check it out. Now, the one thing you need to understand is that we still have the old version on Amazon, all right? We sort of did the math. We had like a few hundred units on Amazon. It's like, what do we do? Do we pay to have it shipped back, ship them the new version of the deodorant, or do we just continue to sell through for the next literally like month? Um, and then give them the new version. And that's what we decided to do because literally for us to ship back the deodorant that they have, it was an extra like two or three dollars per unit in terms of shipping to get it back to us. And these are already like expensive. And that's another kind of myth I just wanna kind of debunk right now. When you create a high quality product, whether or not it's a hairstyling product, a bar of soap, a deodorant, a shirt, like whatever, when you use higher quality ingredients, the cost is higher, right? What it costs me to make this deodorant versus what it costs like Arm & Hammer or, you know, Speed Stick or some, some of these other companies to make their deodorant, even though, yes, like in terms of scale, they're making it in a much larger 
quantity, it's still probably three times as expensive for me, my cost, to make this than it is some of these other deodorants. Um, could I have gone cheaper and gotten better profit margin? The answer is yes. But did I truly want to create a product for me that solved my problem? That's the, that's the question and the answer was, of course, the answer is, is yes. But when you use higher quality ingredients, your cost is gonna be higher. If you use cheap ingredients, yeah, it's gonna be lower, but is the quality gonna be that good or as good? Probably, def I should say, definitely not. And you've really got to decide, is it worth, you know, basically investing in higher quality, knowing that you're gonna to have to charge a little bit more because the truth is, our deodorant costs more than like all the deodorants you're gonna go into a store and buy that are shitty quality. But are people, are some people willing to invest and pay a little bit more for a higher quality product, all right? And the answer is yes. My mom is a perfect example. She doesn't understand, right? And every time I talk to her and I'm like, yeah, our sea salt spray is $19. Our deodorant is, I forget what it is. I think it's like $17. Um, she's like, oh, $17. I'm like, mom, you don't understand. The stuff that you're using sucks. The stuff that we're using is higher quality. And the other thing you have to understand is that your audience, my audience, whoever you're selling to, if you've done a good enough job letting them know and explaining and educating your consumer on the values of higher quality ingredients and why it's beneficial, it's easy to sell. Do not be ashamed to charge what a product is worth. And that's kind of, I guess, the last thing I'd just like to leave you with. So often we get into the mindset of I wanna charge as little as possible. You know, and the truth is that if you charge a little bit more, it's gonna do a few things. Number one, it's gonna give you more margin to use in order to advertise because that was one of the biggest lessons that I learned the hard way with Enemy. I charged way too little for a high quality product that cost me way too much to actually manufacture, which meant I didn't have enough money to actually figure out the cold advertising game, right? And so if you do that, you understand that you're in a position of weakness from the start. Right? The other thing that happens is when you actually sell a product for a higher value, there's a higher perceived value. Perception is often one of the things that helps us sell things. And if somebody perceives this to be higher quality because it costs more, that in and of itself a lot of times is going to convert certain people. All right, not all of them. There are some people that are definitely more price sensitive, right? Men are much more price sensitive than women. Did I tell you and talk to you guys yet about how I think Pete and Pedro is gonna come out with some women's expensive high and stuff. Do you want me to tell you about the women's line idea that I've had, gentlemen? I got to tell you about that because it's different than, and it's, it, it, you, I, I, there's, there's a thing that I got to explain. All right, down below say, yo, Alpha, tell us about the Pete and Pedro chick line, right? That's going to be super premium, super expensive, super crazy, amazing, high quality, and sold primarily on Amazon. Anyway, if you want to hear the story and the thought process of why a men's brand would possibly go into this market that we have no experience with, are we crazy? The answer is maybe crazy like a fox. I'll explain it later. Anyway, I wanted to just tell you kind of what happened with this deodorant because when we launched it, I thought it was the best. We got reviews. Some people didn't think that it was. And so I decided as a business owner, I wanted to make the best product I possibly could. And so it meant selling through the inventory, but going back to the drawing board, going to my manufacturing, saying, how do we make this better? I need it to literally last 24 hours a day because I don't want my pits to stink. Gentlemen, that's where I'm gonna wrap things up. If you dug this brain dump, there's probably a lot of value in here somewhere, possibly not, but if you're interested in dropping me one of these, I would love it down below. If you wanna check out the new and improved version, 2.0 deodorant, I won't even tell you about why I almost got sued. Maybe I will in another vlog because there's another lesson in that that I gotta talk about. There's so many lessons I'm thinking about. Gentlemen, anyway, something that I've already learned is that you are amazing.